Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know, I'm still Angie, this is still 4 of Beauty, you still have the best seat in the house. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title and if you read any of it, the description, don't worry, I don't read it until afterwards, any. This is a collab with my lovely friend, the wonderful Will Venus. And today, our looks have been inspired by one of the planets of the solar system. It is, of course, the third rock from the sun. Earth upon which we inhabit. So, if you want to find out what I used to get this look and how I achieved it, you are in exactly the right place. Sammy the Sloth Straw is currently having a siesta, so grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Here it comes. Hey lovelies, right, okay, I'm here. Uh, this is about the third time I'm attempting this look because I've done two looks so far and hated what I'd done. So I scrapped it and I'm starting again. So forgive me. This, as you will have seen from the, um, the intro and all the other bits and pieces that go up, is a collab with my lovely wee Scottish Viking friend Will Venus. Um, long term viewers will remember that I have actually started a planets or solar system or zodiac series on my channel um, which kind of went to the wayside because I, I physically didn't have enough lower pain days to be able to get the four films done to go out in a week which is how I like to deliver that series so that's currently on pause but Will Venus of course um, and he's doing a series where um, you do a look inspired by one of the planets mine obviously is, is a bit different to that um, I have four different things relating to each sign in the zodiac, so planets being one of them. So I was really, really excited that he asked me to be part of this uh, series. He actually asked me quite a while ago, um, while my pain levels were through the roof. And um, bless him, he's been extremely patient with me, waiting for me to get to the stage when I can actually film. <clears throat> I'm a little bit husky today, I apologise. Um, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. The primer of choice today, this is something that I got in one of my rocker boxes. This is the Fix and Rouge Wonder Love Charm Glow Elixir. Because I mean, I've, I've tried to cover them a bit with um, <clears throat> concealer or sin cream <laughs> basically i'm having breakouts on my chin the like i've not seen since i was 12. um chin spots for women tend to be hormonal so yay probably means i'm hitting perimenopause wonderful something else to look forward to um but because of that i'm going to be using a slightly heavier coverage foundation. Um, just recently my favourites have been the Urban Decay uh, Hydromaniac and um, the Stay Naked also Urban Decay. Um, but I think today I'm going to have to go for something with a little bit more oomph so I might give this NARS one another try. I've only used it once so far. 
this is the uh, the soft matte complete foundation in Mont Blanc so I thought because I'm going to be going for quite a matte foundation I'd put a bit of a glowy primer on underneath just to try and help balance it out a little bit right uh, the planet that I got first pick of the planets which I'm going to like to do and I chose Earth because being a Taurian uh, I fall under the Earth part of the zodiac um, and as a Taurian I'm very grounded I like to put down roots and stay where I am I don't I don't deal with change well um, last minute changes to anything quickest way to get me to throw my toys out the pram <coughs> so <clears throat> here's the picture that I have chosen of the earth that I'm going to be using there's a lot of options in terms of photos of the earth a lot of them tend to be very heavily blue and um, sort of light green with lots and lots of white cloud or if it's more over um, sort of the, the African and Asian uh, continents and then you see a lot more brown I liked this one because the brown areas are more sort of mustardy yellow um, and the green is still there but there's still a lot of blue so I'm probably I'm going to be using <clears throat> this palette that Will actually sent me this Lorock palette which is lovely this is called Intergalactic so it fits in quite well um, and I'm probably just going to use the greens out of this because the two yellows, that's that's too yellow that's too brown and that's a shimmer but I have had this pixie quad for quite some time I bought this because of Angelica Lirma because she said apparently these don't need glitter glue to stay on your eyes so I'm going to give that a go today and I'm going to be using certainly this blue, possibly this teal and maybe a little bit of the, the white for the clouds. So I should be giving that a go today as well. Now this still remains a teaching channel so as such you will see just my eyes on screen when I am filming the look. Um, and I'll probably concentrate more on, on discussing techniques of how I'm applying it, which techniques I'm using and why, rather than talking about the collab and will so much. I'll save that probably for the end. That squeaking, not my back, table. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> to be at the right height for filming, I have to be perched up on my kitchen stool. Which means my leg is jammed right up tight under the table, it literally just fits underneath. Uh, because I'm obviously quite a bit taller than on a kitchen chair. And as such, my leg keeps going dead and my bum goes numb. So, there will be times when there will be cuts in the film where I have to get up and wiggle a little bit. On account of how I can't feel my feet or my bum or something. That's neither here nor there. I'm going to insert a clip <laughs> in just a minute which will just be my eyes on screen and I'll talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes a lot of people uh, confuse the two including I have to say bigger beauty gurus who should know better um, <clears throat> but apparently they don't so I'm going to talk you through the difference between those two how to work out which you have and the workaround techniques for your eye shape because although the way that eyeshadow wears and looks is very similar the actual application methods to get the best initial impact and the most longevity from your look is slightly different but I'll cover all of that in the clip it's super simple anyone can follow it from beginners through to experts all of my films are done so that beginners can sit down and follow along. If, of course, you are slightly more advanced, 
feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up a little bit. I'm probably going to sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks, but you may find that amusing. Okay, here's the clip and I will see you the other side of it, again, just my eyes on screen, and I'll be applying some coloured pigments to my eyelids. See you in a minute. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids that have very similar issues. 
Hey my lovelies and I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with a BH fluffy blending brush and I'm going to go into I think I'm going to poison which is this bright limey green tap off again now I'm going to be doing the um, foxtrot blending method which is a natural turns towards the nose a flecker when we get there and reverse turns to come back again the reason I do that as opposed to the windshield wiper or windscreen wiper is because I'm 48 years old and I've lost over 200 pounds in weight skin on my eyelids moves but I know slim teenagers that have the same issue so it can be genetic okay and by doing this method we're gently manipulating the lid around without putting any stress on it and without stretching it so that we can deposit the colour without getting the telltale white streaks that you can get when you just use that movement. I do occasionally use that as well, but I rely more on the foxtrot. I always start on the outside edge of the eye because if it does deposit too much, it's so much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. And yes, this eye is looking particularly pink. It's hay fever. Marvellous. So, Starting halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And I tapped off quite a bit because I wasn't sure how pigmented this was going to be. I'm just going to pick up a little bit more pigment. It's the first time I've used the rock shadows. They're packed quite firmly which can be good for beginners um, because it means that you you don't deposit colour very quickly uh, you sort of you start off quite light and then build it up different brush in a minute. I'm not sure this is quite giving me the result I'm looking for. I'll keep going for a bit. Slowly build the colour up. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, well, and I sincerely hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, well then darling, I hope it's as fabulous as you are. Okay, that's built up quite nicely. Just need to wiggle folks, hang on a minute. I'm back. And now repeating the whole thing on this side. And the reason that I do both eyes at the same time kind of thing in terms of not doing one eye completely and then doing the other one is because unless you're Jimmy Chuck and uh, photoshop the heck out of it afterwards your eyes are not symmetrical no matter how much you may wish they are and uh, uh, with fibro I get random swelling anyway um, various parts of my body make your own joke um, and also obviously with hay fever and everything I can get quite puffy eyelids 
and you can find sometimes that even though you've applied the shadow in exactly the same manner on both eyes this does not want to take just there does it mind you I have got a dry patch just there Try tapping it on and then blending. That's better. Um, yeah, you may find that even though you've applied them the same shape, when you relax your brows and look forward, they look slightly different in shape. For example, this one that needs to come up a little bit here today. And the thing is, if you do all of the colours on one eye and then start to go across and do the other eye, if you have an issue like that, it's not always easy to work out which one of the colours needs adjusting to make it match. Just using a clean microfiber cloth to clean the excess off of the brush. I don't like using um, colour switches. They're way too harsh on your bristles, especially when you're using natural head. I mean, I'm, I'm using a synthetic brush today, but um, yeah, natural head brushes, ooh, they're way too harsh. Way, way, way too harsh. Um, if I haven't got a microfiber cloth, I'll even grab a piece of kitchen roll over a colour switch. Seriously. Oh. Right. Sorry folks, I'm back again. But I'm going in with a By Jingle M14 brush, which is a bit more tapered, as you can see. But it's not as tightly tapered as a pencil brush. And I'm going to go into Asteroid. It's a really beautiful sort of forest emerald green. <sighs> Fallout City. That's why I do my foundation afterwards. Right, I'm going to start off at the edge of my natural crease. Initially, I'm just going to do rather large circle because I also want it to come down onto the mobile lid and I'm going to pick up some more and carry this through the crease all the way across And just tuck it in the inner part there and come back out again. Just blend where those two greens meet. Is to flick the outer edge up because if I can't put eyeliner on because my eyes are too watery it will still give the same lifted effect liner on gives you a bit of a cheat line to follow. I'll show you in a minute how I tidy that up. A lot of people say to me why don't I use um, tape or something. The thing is, particularly when you've got flexible lids, if the tape is going to be sticky enough 
to stop powder going underneath it to give you that crisp line. When you remove it, it's going to be pulling at your skin on your eyelid. Now, I've got super deep creasing just here. See those white stripes? Even with using the Foxtrot method. And that's from when I was about four or five years old at the ophthalmic hospital in, in my town where I live. And they were pulling my eye around trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly out of it. Forty odd years later, I'm paying the price. Um, when I'm putting anything on the lid here, I do have to be super, super careful because I always say don't ever pull your eyelids around and stretch them out because you'll give yourself the issue that I have which I can I can adhere to with this eye but with this eye if I do that what happens is what well, whatever I'm putting down be it powder or glitter or whatever it settles into the creases and then throughout the day it starts to crumble down into my eye wow this is losing a lot of bristles expect that the first couple of times you use a brush which I've been washed a couple of times but it's losing a lot see what I've dusted quite a lot off hmm. right so to tidy up I've got a pad with my cellar water on Literally, just going to wipe a straight line. It's that easy. Much easier than faffing around with tape. for applying glitters but do you think I can find them right now can I echoes like but apparently as I said according to Angelica Lirmar these didn't need it some of this up on a Morphe X Joffrey Starfish JS10 I'm going to get my little mirror sent me. Yay! So I'm going to look down into it and see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pray that she's right and you don't need glitter glue with this. Wish me luck. going on too badly.
especially seeing as this is a bristle brush, not a silicone brush. I'm quite happy with that. Well, well, well. Right now, with the other eye, I'm going to show you the technique that I have to use. What I have to do is straighten out the area that is creased, deeply creased. But I have a method to do it. I don't just whack it all out right out the arm here on because that will just make it a million times worse. Gently stretch the lid out. So they're literally just flattened out. You can see there's still movement to that lid, it's not held tightly. And then apply the pigment, or in this case the glitter, and smooth it as much as possible over the area, and then gently let it go back. And then do the rest of the eye in the same way that I did the other one. See, there's a lot more movement on this eye than there was on the lid of the other eye. Alright, I'm actually very pleasantly surprised by that. not expect that to go on that well without glitter glue. Especially for a bristle brush. Right my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you while I apply foundation and base products and stuff and I will be back well, for you it's going to be instant to finish off under my eyes. So, don't go anywhere. I'll see you after this swirly bit. And I am back, as you can see. I have done the brows in the same dark green that I used through the crease. As always, I use my pink honey. Honey, la, honey glue in strawberry sherbet. You can see from the size of the hole there how much I use it. And I'm going to go in with the Volder Morphe Jofferson Starship JS13 brush. And I'm going to go into, I think I'm going to Comet, which is the yellow. Because I use my yellow NYX blush today. I think I'm just going to pop some of this bright yellow just under the lower lash line just to brighten it up a tad. And I'll then blend that with a bit of green just to knock the brightness down a little bit. Yeah, I thought using my yellow br uh, blush would. Um, work quite nicely for sort of the African region. Back into poison. Just smudge that along. Just to knock some of the brightness out of that yellow. Lovely. Lovely. Philadelphia. Got to be of a certain age and a UK person to remember that effort. Right. Now, in terms of highlight, I have one. Now, bearing in mind that my lovely Will calls me Mother Makeup, and we are doing the Earth for our inspiration, how about 
Mother Earth highlighter from Ofra, which is a white base with a green shift. See that? See, I've thought about this. I've given it real thought. And again, with a lip brush, this is a well over probably 20 years old now. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that under the tail of my brows. For those fluffy white clouds. I will also pop some on the inner corner. Bring it along. Just blend it in with that yellow. I'm not putting glitter on my inner corner for obvious reasons. You don't have to blend it into your lower lash line. I just like to do it because particularly when I've got very runny eyes like I have today, um, it just for me it just completes the look when I can't use pencil on my waterline. So there's the eye look, almost done, just needs mascara. Uh, so I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to spray my face with my Gerard Slay All Day in Rose. Love this. I do have a discount code with them. It's listed in the description. All of my discount codes are listed and they state whether I earn from them or not. So I'm going to spray my face with this and then I'm going to chuck some highlighter to various parts of my face. And then put some mascara on, and then some lippy, do something with the hair, or maybe stick a wig on, haven't decided yet, and uh, I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. Spiral a really bit. Mm -hmm. There we go, I decided to pop my little black bob wig on. It's, it's either Velma Kelly or it's Nessa, depending on... How well you know me, I guess. But this is my finished look, inspired by checking I haven't got any lipstick on my teeth, inspired by the earth upon which we live. So what do you think? The lipstick by the way is uh, Slay Cosmetics. Matte liquid lipstick in camo licious Really nice formula as well. Not very drying, very lightweight. Um, holds up quite well through eating. Obviously, oils and stuff kill it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a good one. I like it. So, this is of course a collab with my lovely friend Will Venus who lives way up in the north of the country in Scotland and I'm way down in the south and at the moment I believe he has better weather than I do down here which is lovely and we both share a love for Alyssa Right love this big fan. As I said, this is a collab that Will started on his channel. Um, he's got a couple of channels, he's, as well as his Will Venus channel. He's also got um, a channel where he discusses um, neurodiversity, so like autism and, and uh, other relevant issues. And he also has a very, very, very successful channel called Aphrodite Postiche because in real life, when he's not playing on the internet and playing with makeup and, got to be honest, slaying it for the amount of time he's been playing with it, um, he is a wig maker. And he does it all by hand and some of the... the the wigs and hair pieces he's made 
they're absolutely amazing they really really are it's another reason I think why I wanted to pop a wig on today because of uh, I mean obviously this is nothing like the wigs that he does this is just a cheap dress up wig for days when my hair is not behaving obviously now you've watched me I'm going to want you to go across and watch his interpretation of the earth and her colours how similar will our looks be? I don't know because I haven't seen this film yet either in fact while you're watching me I'm probably watching him unless you've already watched him and then you've come to me in which case you're probably having a cup of tea anyway if you are one of my regular viewers please double check you are still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots and uh, so probably not that obvious with my lack of uploads recently I am trying to get back into the saddle and uh, get things going again folks I'm on one upload a week at the moment I'm going to build my way back up to the three I hope but uh, it all depends on my health once you've checked your subscribed it's also worth checking your notification status not just for me but for all of the channels you follow because YouTube keep knocking all of mine from personal uh, from all to personalise which means I don't get any at all um, it happens to me for channels that I follow it's happened for people that are following me so it's always worth giving that a double check on channels that you want to get notifications from if you're new here however hi hello welcome I hope you've enjoyed it here um, this is pretty much a good indication of the nuttiness you're going to get from this channel really uh, crazy mad half Welsh half Yorkshire bird whose brain occasionally walks out halfway through a film doesn't always come back before the end of it <coughs> but if you enjoyed it and you want to see more it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4 f family we are the nicest family on the internet it's super easy to do hit that red subscribe button turn it grey then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that the gremlins at youtube will actually pull their finger out and send you some in the meantime as well as this rather ample back side upon which i am perched i have a very ample back catalogue of films you can be catching up on to uh, find out a little bit more about me and the kind of styles that i like doing i've got tutorials collabs uh, product reviews, challenges, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them, I'm sure you'll find something that will interest you. So basically grab yourself a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and just indulge in a bit of me time. Right my lovelies, that will do for me for today. So I will leave you as ever saying you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.